Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial. Now this tutorial isn't strictly on shapes, it's actually going to be on the write on tool. But it follows on from what we've been doing to create shapes and certainly items for a motion background. And I'm also going to use the similar sort of approach to the previous tutorial where we created this spiral in After Effects by pasting in a path from Illustrator. So if I open up my paths here and I look at the um, shape that I've created, and I go to trim paths which we added you'll see that we can trim or draw on a true spiral in After Effects by pasting in the path from Illustrator however the problem we've got with this is that its stroke width is even all the way through now you'd have thought that you could animate the stroke width of the shape so if we go down to stroke and we look at stroke width here's stroke width at 12 all the way through if we were to click, say, the stopwatch on stroke width and turn it up at the beginning to some nice big value and then go to the end, hoping that the stroke would be large at one end and taper away at the other, if I start turning it down, you'll see that the whole thing is affected over time and we're not getting the result that we want, where we could have a thick stroke at the beginning and a thin stroke at the end or vice versa. It's not possible to do this with shape layers. You actually need to use a different effect. And the effect that we're going to use is actually going to be the write-on effect. And I'm going to show you how to use the write-on effect, not just for a spiral like this, but how you can use it for other paths to create some very effective results. Now, click the eyeball. I'm going to turn that layer off and select away so it's deselected. And you can see over here I'm in the Effects and Presets panel, and I've started typing the word write. So if I just get rid of that to show you again, here's your Effects and Presets. You've got all your Effects and Presets in there. To find an effect, if you know what the name is but you don't know where it is, you start typing into it and within no time at all you'll find the effect. There's the effect, it's called Write On, it's under Generate Write On. However, you need to apply Write On to a solid layer. So I need to select my composition down here and then I can go to Layer New Solid and make sure it's comp size, it doesn't really matter what the colour is going to make mine a sort of a medium red and click OK and then I take the right on effect now I could just drag it and drop it up here in the composition panel but probably the better way of doing it and best practice is to take it down to your timeline and go over the actual layer that you're going to be applying it to because that way you know it's gone to the right layer and just let go and now we know that this solid layer has got this effect applied and it's probably better to rename your solids I probably should have named it while I created it, but I'm going to name it by hitting the return button on my keyboard and call it Write On, so that if I had a complex composition, I would know which layer had the Write On effect applied, so that I could easily find it without any problems. So, the Write On effect is applied. Let's have a little look at the Write On effect. Now, the Write On effect has got a brush position, which is this little target point in the middle. That's where it is applied. And as you can see, as I move it around, these numbers will change to show you where it is. So to apply this effect, you need to animate the brush position. This is the color that will be painted on or written on. And this is the size of the brush. So I'm going to take it right up so it's nice and big. And actually, I'm going to zoom in so that we can see it a little bit better. So we've got the brush size that we can play with. We've also got the brush hardness. If I take that up to 100%, you can see it's got a solid or a hard edge around the outside. Then take it back down. You can make it nice and soft at the edge. I think the default was 79, so I'm going to take it roughly to that place. And also you can change the opacity of the brush. So I can turn it right down to be invisible or take it right up. You can play around with these to your heart's content. We'll come to the other ones in a moment. Let's start dealing with animation to start off with. So I'm going to go back to fit with this drop down. And let's just do a quick animation over our five seconds. So brush position. Hit the stopwatch, I'm going to go forward a couple of seconds and pull it across. That creates a fairly straight line, or totally straight line in fact. But if I go forward a couple of seconds, or a second in this case, and pull it around, you'll see that I've actually got a nice curve. If I go to the end and do the same thing and pull it around from there, 
I get a curve going the other way. And I've actually got an animated shape coming on, or an animated line coming on. Okay, now what we wanted to do, we wanted to change or taper the stroke width from one end to the other. Now, you'd have thought that all you needed to do was to go to the front and click brush size, and then go to the end and change it. But look, the whole stroke is affected in one go. That's not going to solve the problem. I'm going to go back to the beginning, turn off that stopwatch for now. Now, the answer is going to be found by going down to this property here, which is called Brush Time Properties. At the moment, it says None. If you click on that, you'll see you've got three options, well, four options, including None. We can actually click on one that says Size, which is going to affect our brush size. We can also affect the Hardness, which is the one below. We are looking at that earlier, or both of them together. Now, all we need to affect is the size. Click on Size. Now, let's animate the brush size, seeing we've changed the brush time properties. Click the stopwatch at the beginning, go to the end, and take it down from 50 to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to take mine right down to almost zero, I think. There you go, zero, maybe one. We've actually animated the size of the stroke over time. So it starts big and goes down to very small. But if I just zoom in at the end here, you'll see that you start to see a whole bunch of dots that happen. We can actually get rid of those dots if we want, or we can have more of those dots with the brush spacing property here. If you take it bigger, you'll get bigger dots that go over a longer part of your timeline. If you take it down to its lowest value, which is 0 0.001, you'll pretty much end up with a smooth line all the way through. So that's how you can actually play with the size of the dots and make sure it looks a lot smoother. Now also, there is another property above that which we haven't looked at, which is called stroke length. And what you need to think of with stroke length is how long do you want this to stay in place? At the moment it says zero, so that when I go all the way through, this stroke, or the length of this, this right on stroke that we've created, is going to stay on screen for the whole length of my animation. But if I want it to start drawing off after, say, two seconds, I take this particular stroke length and drag it up to two seconds, there, and then go back to the beginning and hit play, and you'll see that after two seconds, this stroke will start to draw off again from the beginning. So click and play, one second to two seconds will be fine. Then after two seconds, as you can see, it's starting to draw off. I'll let that run all the way through. Okay, so the idea behind this one is, do you want this stroke to stay on constantly, or do you want it to start going off afterwards and disappear? And if you do want it to go off, how quickly do you want it to go off? And there you go, we've got those particular options there. Right, now, the other couple of things that are going to be quite important to us is right at the bottom, where we've got this one that says paint style. At the moment it says on original image, which is this medium red, remember that medium red. If I click the drop down, I've got something that says on transparent. If I click on transparent, now it's going to be drawing this stroke on a truly transparent background, giving me an alpha channel. So I'm drawing over something else, which is brilliant for the shapes that we might want for a motion background, say for a text creation. Or if you want to create arrows or swirls or whatever, as shapes that you can use in something else. But also, you'll see at the bottom we've got reveal original image. Now our original image is a medium red solid. So if I click reveal the original image, it will start to reveal the background, which is a medium red solid. And I can take that through all the way through. But of course, you could have a picture underneath. Now you could start to reveal the picture as you started to work through. So you've got all of these different options that you can play with in right on effect. And we can paste in paths. Because the problem we have when trying to animate this brush position is it's actually very hard to do a good job. But we can use other tools, such as the spiral that we had in Illustrator, to give us much better results. So let's do that. Let's turn off brush position. So at the moment, brush position is just wherever the brush is. We'll take it to the middle. And let's go to back to Illustrator and select the spiral that we created in the last tutorial. So select the spiral and go Edit, Copy and then we can minimize 
Illustrator. Now what we want to do is we want to paste in the path that we've just copied from Illustrator into the brush position. However, you can't select it up here, so double click on the effect and notice that it opens it up down here in the timeline. Now brush position happens to be selected because that's the top of the list. Make sure it's selected, make sure your current time indicator is at the beginning and go edit paste or control or command V. And we get some keyframes instantly in our timeline. Now look at the keyframes. We've got a linear keyframe at the front and a linear keyframe at the end but we've got these circular keyframes in the middle. These are roving keyframes. And roving keyframes will always move in proportion to the keyframe before and end. So if we shrink this, they'll move in proportion. If we lengthen it, they'll move in proportion, which is really valuable. However, you can't move them with them all selected because they will all move as one lump. Control Command Z to take it back to the beginning. So you must click away to deselect them then select the keyframe at the end, drag it all the way through, and now we have pasted in a path and we've made sure the path is gonna last for five seconds and we've actually animated the brush size all the way through. Let's just take that back to a white on a transparent background so that we can see it very clearly. Hit play and you'll see that over the five seconds we've got an animated spiral. that clearly starts to draw off because I've left this at two seconds. In fact, if we turn that back to zero, and then pull it all the way through, you'll see it draws on, and we end up with a complete spiral that goes with a thick stroke at the beginning, very thin stroke at the end, and we can even do things such as animate the color. So let's just do that very quickly, go to the beginning, click the stopwatch next to the color, Go forward two and a half seconds, and then change the color to say a bright red, and then go to the end and change the color to say a dark blue. Click OK. You can see that we're not only animating the stroke, we're also animating the color of the stroke all the way through as it goes through and tapering out, and that is truly on a transparent background. This is because paint time properties is on color so we can actually change the color, but you can also do this with opacity as well. So in the same way that we've changed size or hardness, you can also animate paint, color, or opacity with this drop down above. So that's the right on effect so far, but I promised I'd show you one other way of doing it. We've done it with a spiral, which is great, which means we can create a spiral. We can create something that's great that can be used as, as an element in some sort of motion background or whatever. So let's now do something a little bit different. I'm gonna leave in place my colors and my stroke width and everything, but I'm gonna turn off my brush position, make sure that the layer is selected, and then select the pen tool, and then very quickly, forgive my rubbish drawing, I'm going to draw a mask on this layer and just see what I come up with. There you go, there's a rubbish hello, done really badly. But now I have a mask. Open up my mask, open up my mask one, and make sure that the mask path is selected and then copy it, control or command C. Go down to my brush position, control or command V to paste it. Notice that I've got all my keyframes, including my roving keyframes. I can now select my mask and delete it entirely. And now I've deselected these keyframes, I can take the linear keyframe and pull it out over my full five seconds. And then I'm not gonna push the space, but I'm just gonna push, pull it along. And you'll see that my rubbish hello is actually animated all the way through, taking into account all the changes that I've made before, including the changes in color and the changes in stroke width all the way through, and that's done on a transparent background. And if you've got time to create a really good mask, you can do something far better than this very quick example. So that is the write-on tool, really powerful and really easy to use, especially when you know that you can take any path be it from Illustrator or a mask that you've created from any layer, copy it, paste it into the brush position, and then stretch it out or shorten it down to last the length of the animation that you want to create. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. It's a really powerful effect. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.